Bryce here here to show you Conk the Outdoors. Today I'm going to be making a staff out of Osage Orange, but before that I'm going to show you how to identify one and then just tell you a couple facts about them. So this is an Osage Orange. The bark is um, orangish gray with uh, some brown in it. The um, branches, branches are on the, on the older branches you'll have thorns so there's like a couple thorns on these right here actually there's a lot of thorns on them and then the tree itself is it doesn't get too tall it's more of a shrubby tree and so there'll be many that come out and it doesn't get tall if you cut one if you cut it down the middle the inside will be orange. It'll be bright orange. And then the the best way to identify one is in the fall, they'll drop big, basically about the size of a softball, color of a softball, and it'll have little green bumps all over it. It'll be kind of heavy. The squirrels like this. So that's, that's how you identify one. Um, the, uh, a long time ago, they'd use these as um, fence posts because they're, they're rot resistant and super strong. So they'd cut these down, make fence posts for barbed wire. Before barbed wire, they'd get thousands of these and plant them so close together and then trim them and trim them about horse height. Not horse height, but they trim them so then the horses couldn't jump over them and then the like all the cattle couldn't push through. So it'd make a big thorny um, fence line which I feel like is pretty cool but I'm gonna walk off into the woods here I'm looking for a specific type of branch this one doesn't have it I need one that's I also can't reach them that are big enough but I'm, I'm gonna go look at a couple other ones we have around here and try to find one to make a staff I'm at the tree it's um in the woods here, it's a little ways away. But this is one that fell down on its own. I didn't cut this down, but it's dead now, so it's just got a couple suckers. But, hold on. Just to show you how strong, I really don't like thorns. There we go. But just to show you how strong it is, this is a, this wood is dead. Like this, I, I just sharpen this. And that, it would take a while to cut through this. But also, if you look closely, you can see the orange wood inside. It's not, it's more yellowish orange, but there's the orange wood. But the branch that I want is right, is this one right here. So I am going to cut this branch right here. Hold on. A little hard to get it from this angle. Okay. So here we go. This is green, so it's not as strong as this one. But, I'm gonna see. Okay, so this one has got it. Right here, it's not, a, as the tree grows, the orange will spread out. But, it's normal, normal color on the, on the outside, and the middle will go orange. And then as the branch grows, that'll spread out throughout the wood. So this is just a young one, so, it uh, it's not quite as yellow yet. Uh, stand this up. Get rid of these branches. Like that. One time, 
It was thicker than this. I tried to make a bow out of um, out of one of these, and uh, it was it was probably about inch and a half, two inches thick, and I couldn't bend it back. I let it sit until it was it was dry. I shaped it. I let it sit, and. Um, then I couldn't bend it. I'd like grab the top and then just lean all my weight into it and it wouldn't bend. It was it was super strong. Alright, I'm gonna cut this off. Alright here. Right there. Always be careful when you're working with a hatchet or an axe. Top there. There you go. So now that you have your um, the stick, the staff here, you're going to you uh, trim off the branches like I just did, and then you're going to want to let it dry until it's dry all the way through. Because when it's dry, that's when it'll it'll get super hard. So you're going to let it dry. Sand all the little nubs off, and then once it, you did it, done all that, you'll get about how high you want it, where your hand will sit, and then you can wrap it in paracord to make a nice, nice grip. I actually have, I'm not sure if it'll be enough. I have a bit of paracord here. I'll just show you how I wrap that. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to take the paracord, I'm going to bring it together like this, just like that. Now I'm going to put it with the loop facing, let's see, where do I grab? Probably about right there. So I'm going to lay it about right there, tip up, going down like that. And I'm going to start wrapping it. Just like this. It's it's gonna I don't have enough paracord to do the whole thing. Like a whole full hand grip part. But then and it's it's a sloppy job because I'm doing it quick and don't have enough. So I'm gonna wrap it around like this. Make sure it's not overlapped. And then, when you get down to the last bit, you're gonna slip it through that loop in the bottom, just like that, and then at the top, you're gonna pull it. You're just gonna tighten that there. And there you go. You have your handle. You'll trim it off, and then you'll, since it's a paracord, you'll fuse it, which I got a video on that as well. And then there you go. You have yourself a super strong, good hiking stick. It's always good to have a hiking stick when you're going in the woods because you can, if it's tall grass, you can prod in front of you, um, scare, give a little bit of warning to the snakes that are that could possibly be in the grass. Um, if it, you're going through the woods, you can hold up in front of you to fend off any spider webs. And um, if you're just taking a long hike, you can um, just carry it. When it dries, it'll get lighter. Right now it's heavy, but when it dries, it'll get super light. There you go. The Indians prize this wood. They would make super good bows out of this, and it would they would they would be expensive bows, like to each other. Like they'd trade a lot of stuff for an osage orange um, bow. 
I would too. This is pretty cool wood. It's one of my favorite woods. I'm glad I have um, the Osage orange trees around here. But that is how you make one. And um, remember to buy Jesus bracelets. See you next time.